Hello YouTube, I'm back with a fairly classic uh, Jason John Contos video, basic, simple, cool sounding Spanish guitar. That's what this channel is all about. I go off in different directions when there's something I care to share, but today we're doing a pretty old school video. So I'll play for you real quick, and then I'll uh, give you an explanation of what I'm playing and how you can play it. As the lesson progresses, it's gonna get slightly more difficult, so I'll make it easier at the start, a little bit more complex towards the end, and then if you want more detail, and more focused teaching, come over to Patreon, basically. I'll have the tabs, and on Patreon I'll put a video that's much more specific, designed for intermediate and advanced guitarists. But here's the basic, here's the basics that will get anyone going. something like that. I never play it quite exactly the same way twice, but that kind of concept. So, we're gonna start with an open low E string. Basically, the, the whole concept, the whole thing that this is built around is that kind of, kind of sound. So that's a two, three, two, zero, two on the D string. So the low E string is obviously an E note. Most of you should know that. The second fret of the D string is also an E note. Most of you should know that, but some people don't. It's an octave, they're both E notes. We go two, three, two. That's E, F, E. That F note clashes beautifully with the E note. It's a hallmark of Spanish guitar. Also heavy metal, interestingly. Interestingly. So two, three, two. Even just that sound. If you've never done that before, I know I was pretty stoked the first time I learned that. But after that, we're gonna do zero, two. Basically, we've got the E and we're playing the note above it, the F, and the note below it, the D, in some kind of interesting combination. So I go two, three, two, oh, two, but there's no reason you can't do something else. You might go three, two, oh, two. You get it, combine those notes. The second time I made it a little bit trickier, and if you can't do this, no stress, or if you can sort of do it, it's a great thing to practice. Two, three, five. So you stuffed it up. Three. And then two through two or two. So that's a pretty cool sound. I love that sound. I do that a lot. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same thing, but instead of doing it here based around this E note, I'm gonna do it here one string lower at the B note. Two through two or two. Two three two three five three two. As I said, tabs will be on Patreon and you don't have to play it exactly like me, it's just the concept. Then I like to play a beautiful A minor chord. I have a sort of long pinky nail, just for times like these. I, um, I know a lot of Spanish guitarists have a full right hand full of long nails, that's not really my vibe. And I use the nail sound very, very rarely, but there's a good example of the nail sound. So you might do a rake. You might do backwards. You might just play it normally. You can do whatever the hell you want. That's the beauty of playing the guitar. And that's my teaching style, just to share some ideas. So we've done an A minor chord. I just did the same riff this time. I'm on the, uh, the G string, the third string. Starting on that A note. Two, three, two, or two. Open A. kind of thing. You can do it on the E, uh, back on the E note. And then to finish off, I just did a B7, which is from the um, A string, two, one, two, zero, two. Did some strumming. I have lots of lessons on strumming. I'm not gonna tell you a strumming pattern. You can figure out your own strumming pattern from the multitude of strumming patterns that I'm sure you know and I've taught and many other people have taught. So do it however you want, you can go crazy with it. You can do whatever you want. And just for a bit of color, 
I was moving that whole bass seven shape upper fret to the C and back. C7, B7, nice jarring sound. Because this open B string is ringing in the C7, it kind of shouldn't be there. But that's a very flamenco thing to do, to put, uh, put open strings where they shouldn't be, to create beautiful jarring dissonances. And an E chord. That's basically what I was doing then. As I said, a few little variations, and I do things a little bit differently each time. I'll quickly list some basic variations you could do. So E major, doesn't have to be E major, you could put the F in the, that's the F note on the fourth string, or you could put the F note, I rearrange my E chord so that my first finger's free. So imagine like playing an F chord, moving back one fret, so it's an E but with a new fingering. And then you've got your first finger free to go on that F note. So an A minor chord, you've got your pinky free, you can put it down on the third fret of the G string. Get that nice jarring dissonance. Another nice place to put the pinky in the A minor is on the third fret there. That should do us for today. I hope that you've gotten something out of that lesson, whether it was a big idea or a small idea I hope that gets you going in some way as I said I'm going to go into more detail on Patreon and I'm going to put the tabs on Patreon but for now for YouTube it's time to turn off YouTube pick up your guitar and go and practice